from the Kodesh Family Church, Germantown. Pastor Happy will inspire you with the practical and down-to-earth Bible-based teachings that will refresh, energize, and motivate you to do your best for the Lord. Join Pastor Happy now as he ministers the Word of God. A miracle, yes, yes, yes. Pray for a miracle. Oh, if you desire a miracle, miracle, just pray for it. Ask and you shall receive. Seek, you will find. Knock, the door will open. As you rise in faith right now. Oh, if it's a wall you want to tear down, tear it down now. Things of the spirit, the naked eyes cannot see. It. But we believe. We believe he exists. We believe he is a great rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Oh, Magnify the Lord, glorify the Lord, seek the face of the Lord while He can. Run. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, oh, we give you all the glory, Lord, Holy Spirit, Blessed Comforter, our Counselor, our Intercessor. Thank you for miracles. Thank you for miracles. Miracles are things we cannot do ourselves, Lord. Come to the world where we recognize it's only your power. Thank you for, Lord, touching us this morning. Thanks, Lord, we stretch forth our hands in the spirit to touch the hem of your garment. And thank you, Lord, for that great and mighty thing you've done. At this very moment, this wonderful thing you've done in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. We give you all the praise. Oh, yes. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Shake Amen. your neighbor. Tell your neighbor the Holy Spirit is here. Amen. Amen. And sit on top of your enemies. Amen. Oh, in the name of Jesus Christ. God send this son. We call him Jesus. He came and died. Live and forgive. He bled and died. And paid my pardon. An empty grave. Is that to prove my Jesus lived? Because he lived, I confess tomorrow. Oh, 
Because he lives, I can, I can face, face tomorrow. tomorrow. Because, because he lives, all fear is gone. And now I know, yes, I know, he holds my future. And life is worth. Shall we be seated? I think there was a prophet called the weeping prophet. And I thought I might be coming a weeping pastor. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We want to hear the word of God. Amen. Today we were at a funeral. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 3. And the message at the funeral is, what is death? Amen. And he said, most of us don't want to think about death. But the wise always think about death. Because death is real. Sorrow is better than laughter. For by the sadness of the continents, the heart is made better. Sorrow is better than laughter. Amen. So last week, we started talking about, see, if you want to be an artist, the best artist you want to always desire is the act of hearing. Amen. You want to be in the business of what? Act of hearing. Hallelujah. My brother, good to see you. Amen. Looks like Kobe loves you so much. Amen. (laughs) Hallelujah. The act of hearing. And one important thing we said last week, is that the voice of God goes with what? The presence of God. You can't take the voice of God away from the presence of God. The moment that happened in the book of Genesis, everything was different. It said in the coolness of the day, he will come and be walking And then Adam heard his voice say, Adam. So the presence and the voice goes together. But the moment that was taken away, we never heard again that God was saying, Adam. And Adam say, I'm hiding. Hallelujah. And so, see, most most of us say we want to hear the voice of God. So any time you're telling yourself, it's a long time I've heard the voice of God, then it means you're telling yourself, it's a long time I've been in the presence of God. You see, long time I've heard the voice of God is equal to long. I mean, it's not talking about being in church. Huh? I said, it's a long time I have been in the presence of God. Because when you are in the presence of God, if the Bible is true, then the voice will be heard. Amen. Amen. Audibly or inaudibly. Voice into your spirit or whichever means. Hallelujah. And so I want to continue sharing with you from our father's book, Bishop Dark Hayward Mills. Amen. The prophet of United Denomination of Lighthouse Churches of which we are part. Amen. Amen. And so he talked about following the voice of God. Last week I talked about following the voice of God. And today I want to talk about 12 kinds of voices every Christian should want to know about. Amen. 12 kinds of voices every Christian should want to know about. You know, Cardinal scripture here, key scripture, First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 10. He said, there are, it may be, many kinds of voices in this world. 
if you are part of humanity, if you breathe air every day, and you are alive and walking, there are many kinds of voices that come to you. And none of those voices is without signification. Amen. And then Bishop wrote something here. He said, with a little experience in this life, any one of you will confess right now with all your heart that there are millions or thousands or hundreds or many ways, different ways that your life could have gone or will go. There are many ways. My brother, is it not true? Amen. I mean, some of us who started with some friends in class one to class six and you look back now and you see some of them, they are alive. You can conclude that there are many ways my life could have gone. There are many ways out here your life could have gone. Amen. Amen. We often come to a crossroad. Mm -hmm. And then we ask ourselves, which is the best? If you take the wrong road, the implications may be you'll not be sitting in America right now. I still be in your village, tapping pan wine or doing whatever, whatever they do in Jamaica. Amen. Amen. There is every possibility. If you take a wrong road, if you marry the wrong person, the consequences are terrible. Amen. Amen. So there are many ways our life could go. Then I was reading a book also. It's called In a Pit with a Lion on a Snowing Day. How many believers do we have? It's talking about Benaya. Chase a lion on a snowing day into a pit and slaughtered a lion on a snowing day. How many believers do we have? That will chase a lion on a snow. Even a snowing day, you don't want to come to the presence of God. A <laughs> thing you're chasing on a snowing day is not a lion. It's not that dem demon that is seeking to destroy you. Amen. Amen. And this guy actually wrote also some powerful things here. He said there are lots of different explanations for every experience. We all go through a lot of experiences in this life. Young ones, don't worry, you will come. The experiences will come. We all go through lots of what? Experiences. But he was writing and said, see, mostly there are many explanations. And while you can control your experiences, you can control your explanations. Faith is a substance of things, hope for evidence of what you've not seen. I was telling somebody the other time, I said, if you prayed about it and you believe it's God, then how are you explaining it now? How do you explain your experiences? He said, the truth is your explanations are more important than your experiences. What you go through the way you actually say to someone else, that is more important. It's more important than what has happened to you. Amen. So your way of explaining events to yourself determines how helpless you become or how energized when you encounter everyday setbacks as well as momentous defeats. Isn't that beautiful? Hallelujah. The way you explain. See, let me give you a typical example. One of the tragic stories we've all heard in the Bible is the story of Joseph. Whilst the guy was young, going about everything, naive, happy, joyful. So his brothers concocted a lie and decided they were going to destroy his life. Amen. Amen. And they sold him into slavery. His life begins to go in a different direction. 
many ways our life could go. And not only was he sold into slavery, he found favor one day to be in Potiphar's house. And he thought, oh, it looks like things are turning around a little bit. Things are beginning to shape up. Amen. Amen. Until one day, one day, Potiphar's madam stretched forth the hand. <laughs> Amen. And he found himself in Egyptian dungeon, in prison. For 14 years, there was no peace. He went through many things. Hallelujah. Amen. The one day he woke up because he kept trusting the Lord. Whilst in those dangers, whilst all this, you see, David could have basically, you know, say, Lord, come on. Why have you deserted me? Why has thou forsaken me? Why have you left me? Amen. I mean, that is, so the explanation he could have been given for his situation would have either perpetuated him more in it, but he chose to give a different explanation. Amen. Amen. And then one day, he said the most unimaginable thing happened person who is in the dungeon was removed from the dungeon and became a prime minister of Egypt. Amen. 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 What made the difference? Genesis chapter 50 verse 20. What made the difference? What made the difference? But as for you, you thought evil against me. He said there was a time famine. All the family had to come to Egypt including the father. And when Jacob died, he took him according to his wish to bury him in the place that he has chosen. And when they came back, the brothers remembered. We did evil against this guy. It was for the sake of our father that the guy didn't do anything. Now, what is going to happen? And when they came to him, the explanation he Give to them. I say, as for you, you thought evil against me. See, don't be just a Christian. Be a believer. Amen. Believe in what you do. Amen. You thought evil against me, but what God meant it unto good. Amen. In other words, I have faith. This is a faith message. You never heard anybody said before that Joseph actually was a faith man. But this is a faith. It said, you, you. I've thought about it. It's been so many years. I went through a lot. But every day I think about the circumstances. Every day I think about those trials. I realize that the hand of God is doing something. You were ignorant. You don't know. Huh? As it is this day, the Lord was doing it so that many people will be saved alive. There are many ways. And if the Lord has shepherded you up to this point, what explanations are you giving? What cries are you crying? What ways are you giving to the devil? To come and magnify himself in your life. Amen. I said, because we are children, the Father has sent his spirit into our spirit. And that spirit is crying, Abba, Father. And so if we have the spirit of God in us as the children of God, then which voice are we hearing? Joseph was a human like you and I. 
he endured worse situations than I believe my brother, you and I, will ever even think of. We have everything going for us. We have a roof over our head. We have some job to go to. We have food to eat. When you enter into your village today, people will carry you and say, the rich man has come. Yeah, life, it's all good for you. Even if you want to compare yourself to this man, what will you say? What will be your testimony? That the Lord meant everything that is happening in my life for good? That the Lord, whose I am, who knows the way, actually is directing my path, and then even though I'm going through the valleys of the shadows of death, that you still recognize that is the hand of God. Amen. We need to come to a point where we begin to really trust and obey. And so this morning, see, Bishop was talking about the will of God. Joseph basically said, look, I live in the will of God. The life I live is not me. Recognize that, that mighty God. And we've been praying about the will of God. But the question is, can you know the will of God concerning your life? Anybody? Is it possible to know the will of God? Is it possible? I think it's possible. It's possible to know the will of God concerning our life, concerning every situation in our life. Amen. Amen. What makes it impossible is that there are many voices. Amen. Amen. And so one way, one sure way to know the will of God is to begin to eliminate all the number of voices that come to you. And to be able to narrow to the voice that you want to hear. Amen. Amen. Because there are so many voices that you will hear. But to actually know that this is the way, this is what I need to do, this is how I need to do, it means you have to actually eliminate. And so in my home, if I actually decide there are many voices all around, and I want to hear a particular voice. I train my ear to that particular voice. And so that I can hear it. Like Kobe is in the crowd. When the wife cried out, he knows. Because he trained his ear to hear the voice. Hallelujah. So there are 12 kinds of voices. And today I just want to quickly tell you the number of voices that are affecting you. And the number of voices that make it impossible for us to be able to live in the will of God. So when Jesus entered into the Garden of Gethsemane, he had to eliminate other voices. And so when he said, Father, your will be done, then he has to say, not my will. Even if you will not take this, because the devil will say, oh, you know, he's leaving you now. So even if you will not change your mind, let your will be done. I will hear only your voice and no other voice. Amen. So, number one, there is the voice of God. There is what? The voice of God. Romans 8.14 tells us, as many as are led by the Spirit of God. They are who? The children of God. So not everyone who says, Lord, Lord. Not everyone who says, I'm a Christian. Is a child of God. Those who are led, but how can you be led by the Spirit? When there are so many other things that are leading you. Anything that has more than two heads is called what? A monster. When you see it, you run. Amen. And so when you are led by many voices, what does your life become? A confused, monstrous life. 
But I said those hmm, for as many as are led. He didn't say as many as receive. Oh, we also have receive and I speak with tongues. Okay, fine. But as many as are led by the Spirit of God. It means God leads his children. And nobody will be leading you. I mean, the Navy people will tell us. And you don't hear the voice. The one in the sense of the commander. <laughs> Amen. Amen. They will tell you this is the way to go. This is how you might think I want to do it different. Say no, this is the way we fight in the battle. Do push-ups. <laughs> Early in the morning. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I saw a drill master the other time. I said, these guys are wicked. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> that job, you should really have some wickedness a little bit in you. You'll be a drill master. Amen. Amen. So there is the voice of God. And if you want to hear the voice of God, it means you need to eliminate all other voices in your life. Amen. But what are all other voices? So there are 11 other kind of voices that I want to just quickly point out this morning. The first is the voice of your mind. Amen. Amen. The voice of what? Your mind. mind. Some of us, education has made us to become literate, illiterate. With reason, with logic to the point where nothing is meaningful anymore. Amen. I mean, it's all about reasoning. But I say, unless you're converted and become like a child, you cannot be led by the Holy Spirit. See, I gave you a story last week that this Jew guy picked me from Houston Airport and then we started talking and then Jesus Christ came in. Amen. Amen. And he wants to prove to me we Jews don't believe in Jesus Christ. You see, and the ego is, uh, but I'm a Jew. and He's a Jew. And we don't believe in him. Amen. Amen. Logic and all comes in. A simple response I give to him is, I am not a Jew. But one thing that I come to know, if not because of this person, at least you didn't say he didn't exist, right? And he existed. And if not because of this man, I don't even know how my life will have been. That alone is more than enough for me. But I don't care whether you believe as your Messiah. That is not my importance. My importance is that there is something good in this thing for me. And I'm going to hold on to it. The guy became quiet. When I got out of that car and I was walking, I turned my back. He couldn't move the car. He was looking at my back until I entered into the sanctuary. I'm sure in his mind he'll be like, who is this? Amen. Mark chapter 2, verse 6. The voice of your mind. Voice of your mind. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there. And they were what? Reasoning in their hearts. They were certain of the Christians. Put your name in there. How do you reason the word of God? Do you receive it as the word of God? The voice of God concerning your situation? Or do you reason with it? They were reasoning. Because the mind is a powerful thing. The mind speaks. The mind tells you what you should do, whether it's right or wrong. The mind is very powerful. Amen. Amen. See, Bishop says, if you're a Christian, don't put your mind to vacation. Lord has given it to you. It's a powerful tool that the Lord has given to you. But how are you using your mind? A true Christian, a true believer, 
actually has the spirit influencing the mind. They that are led by the spirit of God, they are the children of God. My daughter doesn't have a mind of her own. I speak to her mind. And what I tell her is what she does. As long as I am leading her. Amen. Amen. If I'm not leading her, then I cannot actually influence her and what her mind should do. But as long as I am leading her, I'm able to say, no, Anna, you have this one or you will not have it. You will go here or you will not go. In her mind, she will want to do. Ah. Another voice comes to say, no, this. As many as are led by the Spirit of God. What mind do we have? What are our minds set on? And we rationalize what we hear. Even the Christianity what we have put ourselves in. You receive the Lord as your personal Lord and Savior. What convictions do you have? Or are we the same as unbelievers? What is the difference between a believer and an unbeliever? Amen. Amen. When you get to your workplace, what is the difference between you and someone who doesn't call on the name of the Lord? These are questions we need to ask ourselves. These are deep things we need to basically because use the mind productively. And when it's a long time you've taken the word of God, it's a long time that something jumped out of there into you. How do you seek to be influenced in your mind? You see, mostly because we don't Try to seek the Lord for ourselves. And so, so many voices come to control us. I'll come to that. I'll mention that right now. And so that somebody else tells you do this, and then you're running. Because you don't have any conviction. Your mind is actually put into captivity. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, it's a powerful thing. The mind is a powerful thing. The second kind of voice or third one, that influences you is the voice of your flesh. Flesh. Uh. Amen. Amen. The flesh. How many people know the flesh speaks louder than anything you can think of? Amen. Amen. The last of the flesh. Amen. Amen. The last of the flesh. The flesh. Flesh influences us. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 to 21 tells us about the works of the flesh. Now the works of the flesh are what? Manifest. There's a manifestation of the flesh. It speaks loud. Huh? The voice of the flesh. It's louder than anything. Hungry. Once you've been sitting here right now, it's supposed to hear the word of God. Flesh, flesh is telling you something. And say, so walk, walk out empty headed. Amen. It is manifest, which are these? <laughs> Anytime you see these things, tell yourself the voice of the flesh is actually dominating someone. Adultery. Amen. What will make someone who is married? Go and chase some other woman. <laughs> Feelings. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, the voice of the flesh. Voice of the flesh begins to tell you that bottle is nicer than the one you have in front of you. <laughs> to whom? The way you saw the other time and it was when she was dancing and this one, I'm not talking about unbelievers. The church. Amen. No, the, the church. 
a church yesterday somebody was actually telling a story how and i was so amazed <laughs> i'll mention the church though i said the guy is actually in the church they had a leader who was a praise and worship leader and do you know what they were doing they were doing drugs ah yeah lord have mercy <laughs> amen so while they were worshiping so when they come you know the worship leader the parties already the signs are going for you they know the trade was going on you see but everything that is hidden will be uncovered the lord cannot be mocked every seed you sow you will reap it in this life and the life to come amen and so the flesh speaks and there are many things fornication fornication young one you're not married and then you go and sit in that room with that boy in the first place something should tell you no don't a voice a voice should tell you that no this is not a good thing at 8 p.m I, my mother doesn't even know and i'm actually going to somebody's room or texting or when you take it you know that eh? and all of a sudden you are on that and then something else pop up instead of running away so let me check it out and see it looks familiar what looks familiar how does that nakedness look familiar to you huh what voice is speaking to you what voice is directing us the flesh amen and it is strong and it is destroying See, the example was given from the book. What we say, explanation, what situation, yeah, issues will come. How are you? What voice is speaking to you? What voice are you hearing? And these are very strong. Lasciviousness. What next? Idolatry. Witchcraft. Hatred. Hatred and witchcraft are in the same category. And you say the person is witch, then you think that one is no. What about you? Huh? Amen. What what about you? Rebellious hearts, sedition, strife, wrath, 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 anger. He said, be angry and sin not. Somebody said, my pressure actually, you know, and I, I, and I realized that because, uh, because I, I was angry. I said, no. It's equated to witchcraft. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I'm not saying it. The anger alone make you, you and that lady who is making a cocoa, you all the same. The voice of the flesh. Bury the flesh. Something else will tell you, Father, forgive. They don't know what they do. Father, forgive. They don't know. That, this person doesn't know. If he knows, he won't do. Forgive. Our flesh should not dominate. Told us in Luke chapter 4 that Jesus was in the wilderness. The flesh could have dominated him. He came and said, if you are the son of God. A voice. A voice. You see, mostly we're picturing that, oh, the devil with two horns, what not, that come to Jesus and then just say, ah. The guy was hungry to the point of death. And then voices begin to speak and say, look, I have so much power. This thing can become a hot bread right now. 
Amen. How many times have you come to those situations? How many times have you come to those moments? Which voice do you listen to? See, it's not just, yeah, we're all making fun and, you know, but the reality comes at that moment. What voice are you listening to? Hallelujah. Amen. Then the voice of the devil. Mm. Voice of the devil. And the devil is right in the church. Bishop was saying the other time, as we sit there right now, the devil is right here. In the form of a human being. Huh? Matthew chapter 16, 23. Jesus told Peter, Get thee behind me, you devil. So what is speaking to your mind? You never know the things what? of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not speaking to your mind. What is speaking to you is what? Satan himself. You only see the way that everybody sees. You don't take any different path for them to actually see and glorify the name of the Lord. And somebody told me the other time, and so my unbeliever friends, what do I do with them? And I said, oh, what do you do with your unbeliever friends? <laughs> the Lord has called you to bear fruit. Let your light so shine that they will see. And you follow them to the club. Oh, I don't drink. And then I'm there. And you're also tapping your hand in a way and they are doing their things. And then you all, I mean, what difference do they see in you? They don't see any difference there. And so you are rather following them. They will never follow you because they have nothing in you to desire. Amen. Amen. Wow. Hallelujah. So I say, look, when you come to church, they're not saying you come to church, so go and throw your unbeliever friends away. It means immediately you start telling yourself, I have a lot of work to do. The voice they should be hearing now should be the voice of the spirit that is babbling inside of you. When you open your mouth, they should be hearing the voice of the spirit. Because all the children of God are led by the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 But the devil comes. He comes in shapes and forms. Sometimes he comes even through our children. Therefore, he uses anything. Remember, man is spirit, has a soul, and only lives in the body. So this, you see, yesterday, that person is dead. The flesh is dead. But the spirit is alive. The spirit man doesn't die. Amen. So we will be in the twinkling of an eye, will be translated. The spirit man doesn't die. And so the devil is looking for something. Because he cannot exist, evil spirit cannot exist in this world without, you know, getting themselves into something. The same way, the spirit of God cannot exist. There's no way. Yeah. Spirits need something to be able to be operational on this earth. And we have given ourselves to, when you wake up the whole day, what you're hearing, it's demonic voices. See? Because there is nothing else that is countering that. You can tell the difference between the voice of the flesh, the voice of the mind, the voice of the devil. Amen. Next one, the voice of prophet. Amen. The voice of prophet. And in the Bible, it talks about there are fake prophets. And anywhere there's anything good, there's a fake one also. It's counterfeit. Hallelujah. So how are you hearing? Which prophet are you listening to? Amen. Which prophet? We dealt about this a lot. In Deuteronomy 2020, believe in the prophet. You see, and when Jehoshaphat was telling them, believe in the prophet, 
He wasn't just basically saying yes. Amen. Amen. There was a true manifestation. Confirmation of what they want. And he's telling them, eliminate every other voice right now. And focus on the voice of God. Amen. When they did, they had more than they can carry. Yes. Amen. Amen. So there is a the voice of the prophet and then there is a the voice of your pastor. Amen. Amen. And there is a the voice of your friends. Voice of your friends. Don't be an equally yoke with an unbeliever. What does that mean? To be equally yoked with an unbeliever. What has righteousness got to do with unrighteousness? The same desire that is all we all have. I mean, most of the time that is why nobody even will listen to you. Because when they see you, they don't see anything different. The only difference is that I say, I wake up Sunday, I come to church. That is all they see. Even they see worse things about you than people who don't even go to church. Amen. Amen. But that is the voice that is telling you what to do. It is your unbeliever friend that is actually telling you now that, oh, this is a counsel for you. And that is a counsel we sit down and listen to. And you pick the phone in the morning, cha 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 cha. Immediately you close from work, is the cha cha cha. And talk and talk until somebody else comes in and you crucify the person. And amen. Yeah. The more they talk, somebody definitely will come in and you chop them into pieces. The unbeliever friends. What you should be doing, the voice they should be hearing is the voice of the Spirit that is drawing them to the Lord. Let them be seeing some light that they will be drawn to the Lord. Are you here or you've gone home? Amen. Amen. There's a story about three friends and a gentleman. They were all in the Bible school. Amen. Amen. They were all in the Bible school. And three years they're going through the Bible school. The guy was such a gentleman. Oh, yes, A1. 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 He, see, it looks like just the brother sitting there. <laughs> hey, man. Very gentle heart. Oh, so the three ladies, oh, they all just like him. Oh. He would do anything, I mean, and he's so soft and gentle spoken that they were all in all of this gentleman. Amen. But then in the nick of time, three years has passed in the Bible school and they've come to the final day where they all have to actually go their own ways. And then something suddenly happened. On that faithful day, the first one came to the gentleman and said, the Lord has spoken to me that we should spend the rest of our lives together. <laughs> Few hours later, the second one also came. Not knowing, he came and also the same thing. See, brother, now that this school is getting over, the Lord has spoken to me that we should spend our lives together. Few hours later, Madam number three also came. <laughs> Hallelujah. And she also came and said, yes, it is revealed from the throne room that me and you <laughs> together forever. Hallelujah. And the gentleman went back to all of them one by one and said, unfortunately, I haven't heard the voice of God. The God that I serve has not spoken to me. 
Because he said, the Lord that I serve is not an author of confusion. If he speaks, his voice is very clear. See, because he knows the voice of God. He understands the voice of God. Amen. Amen. And so, which voice? And then the voice of your spouse. Your voice of your spouse. The story was told, say Hitler, he never got married. He had a girlfriend, you know, this woman, until the day that he was cornered. Very last day, when he knew that it was all over, then he called the lady and said, we need to marry right now. And then after they married, they took poison and died. Amen. But he said, the woman was so joyful that he said, now they can call me Madame Frau. Voice of your spouse. Some people have turned their spouse into gods. That is the one they listen to. Amen. The same way some people have turned their pastors into gods. My pastor says, or my prophet says, what is the voice of God? Amen. The voice of circumstances. This one, very, very strong. Voice of circumstances. Each and every one of us will go through issues. As long as you are born of a woman into this world, you will go through circumstances. Things you'll be standing in. And those things speak to you. At every point in your life, there will be something that actually is paramount. It could be your job. It could be some adversity that has come your way. It will be speaking strong. But at that point, are you going to succumb to the voice of that circumstances? Or are you going to be like Joseph? He had a terrible circumstances. At that moment, how are you going to stand? Which road are you going to go? Which direction are you going to go? Amen. Amen. This is actually a destroying one. This specifically is what I was pointing out to you when a guy was writing his book and said, the way you explain it, the way you think about it, the way you actually, it's more important than the circumstance itself. Because your next step depends on where you're standing and what kind of voices are influencing you at the moment. Your redemption depends on how you're standing right now in that circumstances. Your next joy depends on which voices you are listening to right now in the circumstance. Because this is a critical one for every believer. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Anyone who comes to him must first believe that he is. Lean not on your own what understanding. Circumstances, you know, come for a purpose. And for a believer, if you're truly hearing the voice of God, that is the first you start going for the promises. What is the promise of Jehovah concerning me as a child? What is the example? You go, take a look at Joseph and you tell yourself, oh yeah, this thing, I know about it. This thing, I understand it. The circumstances. But that is where Christians become non-Christians. That is where even people backslide from the Lord. Oh Lord, and I was on my knees and I was shouting and shouting. Even I called that pastor, put his hand on me and nothing happened. And so what kind of church is all this? I'm out. 
Hallelujah. Because at the point, we don't know the will of God concerning us. We don't know the will of God. But for us to know the will of God, for us to understand the will of God, we need to be able to eliminate every other voice. Hallelujah. Are you here or you've gone home? We need to do what? Eliminate every other voice. All the voices that are coming. You see, because there are three things that are happening and I'm going to close and next Sunday we'll talk about what are the weapons we can have to eliminate all voices except the voice of God. It should be paramount. There are three things that are happening to every believer. Hmm? We are swaying from the perfect will of God to the imperfect will of God and out of the will of God. Yeah. Because of all these voices that I'm enumerating, in every moment, either you are in the perfect will of God or you are in the imperfect will of God and you are completely out of the will of God. The will of God concerning you. The will of God concerning your existence right now. The will of God concerning your life right now. Concerning that situation in your life right now. Is it a perfect will of God? Or are you out of the will of God? And to be out of the will of God is basically to throw yourself into a fire. And so we need to actually seek to know the voice of God. But you can know the voice of God practically if you don't seek. There is nothing, no circumstances, nothing, no other voice that you hear that actually doesn't have a counter. This is a voice of God. There is no magic in this world. You can eliminate your mind when you have the mind of Christ. And how do you have the mind of Christ? It's in the word of God. When this captivates you, you begin to walk and think like Christ. Amen. Amen. But when we neglect it, I'd say it's only 11% of whatever every preacher, no matter how interesting the message is, goes into the heart of man. But when we walk out of here and we throw it away, we put it somewhere else. And then we want to know the will of God. That is almost like deceiving yourself every day. For lack of wisdom, we perish. Amen. Amen. When Father Abraham encountered Lazarus and the rich man, he told them, you have the prophets, you have the scriptures. Nobody will wake up from the dead and come and tell you anything. If they will not hear, if they will not what? Hear. In other words, he was telling, look, the voice of God is so paramount to them. It's closer than it has before. In the olden times, as a priest, now must become like the champion of the voice of God. But in the dispensation of grace, he said, the moment you receive the Lord, he gives you the Spirit. And that spirit comes in and begins to cry, Abba, Father. There is no believer who can ever say that I cannot know the voice of God. Those who don't know are the ones who don't seek. Those who don't know are the ones that allow all other voices to captivate them. And that is why you see there are more trials, there are more cries, there are more sorrows in the church that you see outside. Even some unbelievers, they get it. They may have wisdom than the children of God. 
But it's my cry this morning that the Lord God Almighty will cause us to begin to eliminate every other voice. The voice of our mind, the voice of our spouse, the voice, anything that contains with the voice of God. Which means it gives us the wisdom to begin to go into his word and say, what does the Lord say? What does the Lord say? That we will not be children to tossed to and fro by any slate of doctrine or any wind or any imagination. You're waiting for somebody to come and tell you that it is your grandmother that is doing this to you. So give me 5,000. Come and put it on the altar right now. We make ourselves to be deceived. And we should blame ourselves on that day. Because there's a day you will look back and you will say, I heard it, but I didn't listen. May the Lord have mercy upon us. Shall we rise to our feet in the name of Jesus Christ? I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee. chapter 3, verse 5. All that I've been saying, if you have not received God as your Lord and Savior, it means you have not even come to a position where you begin to want to know the voice of God, want to know and walk in the will of the Father. Say, so trust in the Lord with all your heart. How do you trust in something that you don't know about? How do you trust in something that you have not acquainted yourself with? Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge and He will direct your path. With all His bow. Oh yes. A rich man found himself in a place where he was wandering. I wish I had known. By the Lord Jesus Christ, He gave up Himself. That it should not be difficult again for us to walk and hear the voice of God and do the will of the Father. If only you want to give your life to Him, He will come in and He said He will guide you. Immediately, you will become a child of God. Translated from this world unto the world of glory. And I want to help you this morning. It's just a confession. With a mouth we confess. And with a heart we believe unto righteousness. So with all heads bowed and eyes closed. Don't be ashamed. If you have not called upon the name of the Lord before. Confess him and say, Lord, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. We do it because he told Nicodemus emphatically. He said, unless you are born again you cannot come into the kingdom of God. And I want to give you the opportunity right now. Before heads bow, just raise your right hand. And I will pray with you. It's as simple as that. The Lord is here. He hears us when we call. It's a spiritual thing. And you'll be born again in the spirit. And you can begin to call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. Your name will be written in the Lamb's book of life. It does not matter how many times you've come to church. That is not what I'm talking about talking about you confessing. So if you confess him before all men, 
he will confess us also before the Father. Right now, anybody wants to give your life to the Lord? You want to give your life to the Lord? In the name of Jesus, shall we all pray this prayer after me? Say, Lord Jesus, I've come to know that you are the Lord of Lords. The Lord of King, of Kings. King of Kings. And I believe your word. And I believe your word. That it's only when I confess you. That it's only when I confess as my Lord and Savior. As my Lord and Savior. That is where you gave me a new name. That's where you gave me to a be a child of the living God. To be a child of and so I confess you now. So I confess as my Lord. As my Lord. And my Savior. And my Savior. Write my name. Write my name. In your book of life. In your book of life. That when you call me. At any moment, Lord, I will come to your glory. Thank you that I'm your child. Thank you that I'm born again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this moment. Thank you for your redemptive power for salvation. Salvation has come to us. And we are so joyful. We're so grateful that you've done it. And that from today onwards, Lord, there is no condemnation for any of us who are in Christ. The blood has been shed for us. And Lord, your voice is all that we will hear. We will seek after you with all our heart. And we will find you, Lord. Our circumstances will have no sway over us, Lord. Things that trouble us in our spirit. Things that trouble our home. Things that trouble our children. Things that seek to destroy us. In the name of Jesus, by the authority and the power in the name of Jesus, we proclaim liberty. As children of God, we proclaim liberty. Liberty. In the name of Jesus Christ. For your way says we should call upon your name and we will be saved. We are saved, Lord. Thank you for your grace. In Jesus' name. We're going to take our communion right now. It's a very important moment where you want to just lift your hearts to the Lord. Jesus told the woman at the well, if only you knew the gift of God and the power, the one that is standing before you right now. If only you knew the gift of God and the power that is in the blood and the body of Christ. You will open up your arm wide today. And you will ask the Lord to take over. And as His body and blood enters into you. Oh yes, the great things the Lord will do with your life. In the name of Jesus, if you have any peculiar circumstances, voices that have been tormenting you, tormenting spirit, call them. Oh, as you take this communion today, I want you to believe in the Lord. Believe in the power of the Lord. He said, when he rose up from the dead, he led captivity captive. And so we cannot be captive to the devil anymore. And as often as we do this, we're walking in the power of his glory. That we are no more under any condemnation. We are peculiar people, chosen generation. He's given us a name that is above every name. I call the children of God. Oh yes, that every bond will be broken. Every voice that is not of the Lord will be eliminated. The mighty name of Jesus Christ. Pray over him. Believe that a woman with the issue of blood. They said, if only I can, I can. You are the one that can receive your redemption. For you can stretch forth your hand in faith and touch this afternoon. Believe and you will receive in Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we go around and share it? He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, the joy that touched my soul. Wonderful happened, and now, now I know He touched me and made me whole.
singing, He touched you. He touched me. Oh, oh, oh He touched you. And oh, that joy that touched us so. Something wonderful is happening. And now, now I know He touched me. For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he has given thanks, he broke it. And he said, take and eat. Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. See after me, the body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Take and eat. This is the body. Jesus Christ. And after the same manner also, he took the cup. And he said, this is the new testament in my blood. This do ye, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat the bread and drink the cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. As often as you do, you confess that there is power in the blood of Jesus Christ. This afternoon, hmm, hear the voice of God. There is power in the blood of Jesus Christ. There is no circumstance that is greater huh? oh, beyond what the Lord can do. Believe right now that the blood is able to set you free. Free from bondage. Free from generational curses and demonic forces. Right now, in Jesus' name, the power in the blood will liberate you. Completely set you free from diseases. It is not of the Lord. As you drink this, may you be cleansed totally. Our sins are forgiven. Our sins are forgiven. Our sins are forgiven. And therefore, devil have no hold over us. We are liberated by the power of the Lord. See after me the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. And you will receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Power is released. Power is released. Power is released to every situation. The name of Jesus Christ. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Oh, the loose of every chain was bound in Jesus' name. Be redeemed every hold of the evil one. We are believers who believe. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Take your second offering, and if you have your tithe, come, let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> 